begin with, all we're going to do is send some data from Safari to our extension to make sure everything's set up correctly. After all, it's been quite a bit of hassle so far with nothing to show for it. First, we're going to modify action.js to send two pieces of data to our extension. The URL the user was visiting and the title of the page. So I'm going to open action.js now and modify its run function like this. We're going to say inside run parameters dot completion function. This is the function that's being passed in to us by Apple to work with. And we'll pass into this thing a JS dictionary where the URL is set to document.url. And the title is set to document.title. Then end it like that. Now, JavaScript is quite a murky language, so it's possible to stare at that blankly. If I put that in plain English, what I'd say is, tell iOS with this completion function that the JS has finished its preprocessing and give this data dictionary, that's this braces here, back to the extension. And that thing has the keys URL here and title here with the values document.url and document.title. As with the previous JavaScript, don't worry about the nitty gritty. There are many volumes of books on learning JS. And I don't intend to repeat them here. Now that it is being sent from JavaScript, it'll be received by Swift. So we can go back to our action view control.swift file and replace this do stuff area here with some code. We're going to try and read out the value we are sent, which is currently this dict value here. And you can see it is some sort of optional NS secure coding. So pretty much anything at all. We'll do a typecast here. We'll say guard let item dictionary equals dict optional typecast as an ns dictionary else return. Now after that guard, we'll say guard let JavaScript values is equal to item dictionary using the ns extension JavaScript preprocessing results key. One big long thing. As question mark again, another NS dictionary. Else return. And if both of those succeeded, we'll go ahead and print JavaScript values. I made a slight typo here, which is why it's complaining. Otherwise, we are all good. So that will run and print out the values it received. Now, before I explain what that code does, please just go ahead and run the code. I'm saying this because if you're like me, you're probably desperate to see anything working at all at this point. So much precise copying out of text that Apple requires from us. So at least let's make sure things are working correctly. So I need to press Command R or press the Run button, and it'll ask us to choose an app to run. And from that list, I want you to select Safari, then press Run inside there. Now I'll build our code and launch the simulator, and this time, hopefully launch Safari. So here I am in Safari now. I'll choose Apple from the list. Go to apple.com. We'll see the current news from Apple. And now I'm going to go ahead and tap the action toolbar button on the bottom. That is box with the arrow coming out of it. So I'll press there. There are two rows of icons. The bottom is the ones we want to care about. So hopefully our extension's in here somewhere. We can scroll around to find it. And there we go, boom, extension. That's our extension right there inside Safari now. If you don't see it there, you wanna go right to the very end and press more and look for it in here and make sure that's enabled for your extension. Anyway, mine's working great here. There's my extension in the list already. Go ahead and press that button now. And I'm being well, there we go, there's our UI appearing. And here in our output is the URL, apple.com, title, apple. So that's worked correctly. If you're seeing that, well done. Your extension's working. If not, I'm sorry, you, you've screwed up somewhere. So go and check my steps again. It has to be exactly like I typed. There's no way around it. It's a real shame. Okay, let's now take a look at the code we wrote. I mean, the important code, the Swift code. As a reminder, it's these lines here, this lock here. Both of our typecasts use 
NS dictionary. It's a new type, and it's not really one you have much cause to use in Swift, because it's a bit of a holdover from older iOS code. Put simply, NS dictionary works like a Swift dictionary, except you don't need to declare or even know what data types it holds. Yes, it's both an advantage and a disadvantage in one, which is why modern Swift dictionaries are preferred. When working with extensions, however, it's definitely an advantage because we just don't know what's in there. We just want to pull out our data. And in fact, it is required in this case. When we use load item for identifier up here, this thing, your closure will be called with the data that was received from the extension along with any error that occurred. Apple could provide other data too. So what we get is a dictionary of data that contains all the information Apple wants us to have. And we put that into this item dictionary constant here. Right now, there's nothing in that dictionary other than the data we sent from JavaScript. And that's stored in a special key called NS extension JavaScript preprocessing results key. So we pulled that out from the dictionary and put it into a value called JavaScript values. We sent a dictionary of data from JavaScript. So we typecast JavaScript values as an NS dictionary again, so we can pull out values using keys. But for now, we send the whole lot to the print function down here, which dumps the dictionary contents to Xcode's debug console. So we have successfully proved that Safari is sending data to our extension. It's time to do something interesting with it.